warning. The Catholic Man Show contains high levels of manliness. If you think you may be too weak to withstand the manliness represented in the following program, please do yourself a favor and stop listening now. If you choose to continue in spite of this warning, if at any time you feel yourself overcome by the manliness, stop immediately and consult your closest medical professional. And now, for the not-so-fair, faint, or frilly, we present The Catholic Man Show. Welcome to the Catholic Man Show. We are on the Lord's team, the winning side. So raise your glass. Adam Minahan here sitting with David Niles, Juan on the buttons, Jim guarding the door, checking our audio. We have a very special episode for you today where we talk about Jesus. It's very different from all the 258 yes. ep episodes that we've had this far. Yeah, we're going to be talking about him in his Eucharistic form today. I'm excited. In film. In film. His filmed Eucharistic form specifically. Yeah. So Distinctions are always good. Stand by. I'm pumped about it. Stand by. Dave. Uh, really, I the whole episode is about Jesus today. Isn't that what it's about? It is every oh, episode, yeah. but like very, it's very literal today. You know, like some days when you read the readings and you like, really, it's obvious how the Old Testament connects, connects with, with, the new. with the gospel. Right, right. And you're like, hey, I I got it today, guys. <laughs> don't worry about it. Today, I got it. Hey, Dr. Scott Hahn, don't worry. Right. Like I, that's how today's episode is going to be in general. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm excited to talk about. At least I think so. We'll see. Yeah, I, I think you're making some hey. presumptions. Hey, hey, <laughs> yeah. hey! Yeah. Let's see what happens. Yeah, um, let's talk about Krumpnik. Okay, so that's that is what we're drinking today. Yes. By the way, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Jesus is born. Can I just share with you? Like, I've had a couple uh, thoughts about. I, I didn't tweet them all. I resisted. I resisted the urge. Um, one of them I did tweet, I'll, and I'll start with Ooh, that I one. I know. I know what it is, and I thought it was a brilliant idea. I did you? Like, we need to. We need to go to the bishop about this. I like. I. I'm surprised that it had, doesn't. I'm I, sure I haven't somebody. heard of it. I'm sure it exists. You right, know, like right, right. I just haven't heard of it. So I was thinking that how, like, does has anyone ever heard of a devotion to the preborn Jesus? Uh, because there's a devotion to the, the infant Jesus, mm -hmm. but what about the preborn Jesus? And, uh, if, if there is official devotions out there, I just haven't heard of them. And, and I, I really hope that there are, um, because it just seemed to me like this would be a great devotion to help, uh, battle the co like battle the, the, the war against abortion. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, totally. I, I, when, when you tweeted that, I was like, hmm. Dave, well done. Thank you. Thank you. The other I even retweeted you. You did. But you were I think the only one. I got you, bro. I just have not I'm not I'm, famous. It's okay. I got you. You've had a tweet go uh, viral it's recently. Like, it's like it doesn't matter. You asked a question about like what what was it? Like does Mary lead you closer to Jesus? Yeah. And would you get like thousands of comments or something? The frustrating thing about Twitter is I will post something that I think is it's brilliant. Dumb. Twitter the no. people like everyone on Twitter is an idiot. <laughs> That's the thing about it. Like I will, I will tweet something and be like, "This could make this, this could be my best this tweet could be my, ever." This, this is brilliant. I like. I'm surprised. If no you were inside my mind, you would understand. And I'll tweet it, and I'll get like tweet. one like, you know, and, and then, it's probably like me or Haley, right? Or and, maybe Pamela, right? And, and it's like I appreciate the sympathy. Like, thank you for for mm -hmm. being my friends. You know, and then I'll say something that's... It's not even a sympathy like. It's just like, yeah, you have to like it. Right. Because we're all best friends. Right. Exactly. Well, yeah. So, and then, like, I say something very obvious. I'll tweet something very obvious that's not profound, that's not something that's mind-blowing, that's very obvious. Yeah. That Mary leads us to Jesus. And then it's like... Of likes. I'm like, wait, what? I opened my phone, and all of a sudden, I was like... I like have, yeah, all of a sudden you're Matt Walsh. Yeah, you know like, what? 
what happened? I just have like 500 likes. You know, it was weird. Yeah. Anyway. So the other thing I was thinking about. You know what? Guess what? Let me just tell you this. Okay, tell me. It means nothing. It means something to me. It means absolutely nothing. Because I can be like, I'm friends with that guy. (laughs) Well, I'm glad that gives you. Who has all those comments? I'm friends with him. (laughs) Okay, what was your other ones? I live very close to him. (laughs) Like, I live a sandwich away. What was the other thing? So the other thing I was thinking about is just like picturing Jesus being born. Okay, and imagine you are one of the shepherds who show up. And I have to believe that the, that the shepherds who came, like, okay, like they were aware that Jesus was the Messiah, but I still think that maybe they didn't have a full understanding of who the Messiah was going to be. I don't know whether they realized this is the second person of the trinity i mean the the trinity had not been revealed to humanity yet okay so they probably didn't realize that they're holding god in their arms but for us who do know that who have the benefit of divine revelation to like imagine yourself time traveling back in a delorean uh could be in a delorean could be in like a like a really fast donkey Wow, that'd be you know what bad. I'm saying? Like Talk about like Shrek donkeys. Yeah, yeah, I mean like a sweet like a sweet donkey. I feel like most donkeys are asses. You know what I'm saying? But uh <laughs> Um anyway, however you get there is is irrelevant to uh, the the th- what I was thinking about. I was just picturing myself, honestly, as a uh as one of these shepherds and imagining that you are sitting there holding the Christ child. And as you're holding the Christ child, he smiles at you. Okay? And thinking about how that would affect the rest of your life, knowing that God has smiled upon you, that God had looked you in the face and have just like found you to be you you have pleased him and he smiled like the just the profundity well, of christ mm-hmm. that you have brought joy to christ and that he smiled at you well no wonder you didn't tweet this dude that was like way more than 240 characters right i mean i would have left out about the like the delorean donkey and stuff but i, I mean something's got to be trimmed hey here's something we need to we need to give an update on okay. our caroling Dude, we had we Oh, dude, the caroling was we did great. awesome. It was awesome. It was awesome. We had Okay, so we had We are definitely doing it next year. This is a tradition that we were starting. I went caroling twice. Yes. We tried to, but You were going to come, but it was like family things didn't work out. We the had, kids Well, it was really more of a hangover kids, of the uh, uh midnight mass. Yeah. That's oh, really you guys what it was. went to midnight mass. Dude, that's the longest Minahan tradition that we know of. And in, in the family. Oh, really? Like my great-grandfather, I know for a fact. I've never been to uh, uh took his it. kids to midnight mass and so like and all through the generations uh, from that point from my great grandfather down to me yeah i've always gone to midnight mass so that i have not been to a christmas mass that wasn't a midnight mass in your whole life that i that i can recall no really it was always midnight mass wow. and so i gotta give a shout out because hopefully maybe in you know 15 years uh, our kids Dude, listen to this i will tell you that I'll christmas give, the, the whole day of christmas is already rough enough. Dude, it's exhausting because you get home. It's rough. You get home at 1.30 and then you had to put your kids down and then. You, and then you do like the other you know, other stuff. All the stuff that you have to do. That, that a parent must has to do. And you don't get to bed till three. And guess what? What time your kids get up? Because it's Christmas. It's Christmas. Yeah. So it's exhausting. But I, I got to give a shout out to my kids because they killed it in Midnight Mass. Luke and Jude both stood they were quiet they were prayerful anna slept through it but you know she's three so okay um i probably would have slept through it leo didn't sleep at all through it he stayed up through the whole thing well how did haley one how did haley do she's exhausted she's still exhausted just and beautifully. rightfully she did beautifully she, she did amazing I think the right i think the word that you're looking for is she did beautifully she did she's still exhausted because uh our kids got up super early picturesque maybe maybe that's the word you're looking for yeah probably so but yeah. so caroling so we did uh we went to caroling we, we had an over under ahead of time of three doors slamming on us and i took the over and i did as well 
we we were fools because we had yeah dude we were idiots yes we didn't have nobody slammed the door on us and afterwards i was thinking why would why did i think anybody was going to slam the door on us because what we did is we put all of our cute kids at the very front right it's not like us not our ugly mugs and we're phenomenal singers and when i say Um, that i mean i mean pamela and i and Haley are phenomenal singers well and anna don't you throw out anna uh, Anna, you know, to be honest, I'm just not very familiar with Anna's. Uh, Everybody at St. Benedict's is very familiar with Anna singing. She's like several pews away from me. And I, and when I sing, I don't know if you know this, but I sing. Okay. So, like I'm over there singing. So is Anna. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but we did like, it was so much fun. It was so much fun to spread Christmas joy yeah. to other people. We had a great time and we, uh, Pamela put together, I guess. We made women cry, literally. I mean, that's mm. not even like there were women who cried at the door mm-hmm. because we were there singing to them. It was amazing. It was very easy. It's a simple thing to do. Uh, that was Every, just everybody loved it. There was one guy who you could tell was standing in the doorway, like out of pure courtesy, and mm-hmm. like, all right, you're here, but. What the most beautiful... We sang three songs. We sang the first verse of three songs. So it was like the way to do it. It was very quick and easy. Uh, but by the end of our third song, a smile had slowly crept onto his face. He couldn't help it. And like he was smiling by the time we were done singing, even though he didn't, in the beginning, was like super annoyed. Right. He liked it at the end. It was great. When we get back, yeah. we have to at least talk a little bit about this crump night. We have yes. not. Yeah, we done will. That. We will. Okay. Okay. We'll be right back. Hey, Juan, the intro and outro music, I don't know if it's just for that first segment, but man, it is loud. The first segment is going to be different than all the other, all the other ones. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought that was the case. Okay. Ready? Yep. Let's just keep going. Mucho! Today. Oh, I'm that's, here that's just wrong. This is why we are not, we're not, at least we're not live streaming. I don't even know how, I what are you doing? Forgotten you. He's trying to, he's trying to mute it. What are you even doing, Juan? He's muting it. You pushed the entirely wrong button. It's okay. He muted it. Stop it. He was thinking like, he was worried that it was live streaming. So his first initial reaction was, hey, stop. that's not, stop. no, 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 don't do that. Cause it doesn't matter. You're not going to save it, but. That's not it. See how it's still going over there? See that right there? What's it called? Oh. Now look for the same title over on the left. Of no, the no, one. no, no, no. Okay, there's a different problem. It's not. It's the problem that I know it is. No, no, no. I mean, like, the shortcut is wrong. I don't know why he does that. You're the one in charge. It's because it's listening to you. The thing is, the machine is listening to you. Adam, the, the, look what I can do. I don't know what happened. I can do that too. Let me see you. I was just doing it. You know how you know how many people cannot do that? You know how many people can't do this? Watch my ears. I cannot do that. Not not like that. I can like if I focus real hard, I can. Like you can barely see you can barely see what I'm doing on the camera. It's the quality stuff you get at the Catholic Man Show. Can like look on camera? Can you okay. see my ears moving? Yes. Can you? Yes. My right ear can move twice as much. My left ear can move, but it's like very small. It's the weak link. Yeah. I mean, like if if ear movement is what we're measuring, it's the weak link. Yeah. If that's what's in, if that's currency, I'm a poor man on the left side. You're like shroot bucks. Yeah. Over here on the left side, totally. And I'm like the dollar on the right side. Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. This is David Niles. I'm dollar on the right, shroot bucks on the left. I don't know if you heard that. The funny thing is, we were measuring, gonna... we were measuring ear movement. Yeah, the funny thing is, I won't, I'll edit all that yeah, out. Yeah, I know. They won't know. But I wanted, I the thing was, I knew that you would, Adam, and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want our audience to miss out on the stuff that goes on between segments. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? Maybe they did. Let's talk about Krupp Neck, though. Okay. 
Because uh, so, this is not the first time we've had Krupnik on the on the Catholic Man Show. Correct. So, but we have the 2020 Krupnik edition. Right. So, so our, our listeners are familiar with the Niles Krupnik tradition. Um, for those, for the new ones, Juan, cut it out. You got to turn off the audio on that webcam if you're going to use it. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yes, every year I like, I like shamed Juan right there. Like that like, was. It's like it was like it was like, like Luke, cut it out. Sorry, Juan. That was just my dad voice coming in, which I apologize for. Keep your dad voice, please, in the yeah. closet. You're right. Well, during the show. During the show. Yeah. I apologize, I mean, Juan. Not when you're with your children. Right. When you're being a dad. Anyway. So, so every year, there's a Niles family tradition that the men of the Niles family get together and we make a batch of Krupnik. What is Krupnik, Dave? Krupnik? Great question, Adam. Krupnik is a Polish dessert liqueur. Um, it was invented by the Benedictine monks in Poland and, uh, in World War II was used for all kinds of things. It was, if you, if you've <laughs> ever seen my big fat Greek wedding, they sort of used it like Windex in that movie. You know, like the dad, he's, he just sprays Windex on everything. So literally they would use it to disinfect things. They would use it as an anas anesthesia. Anesthetic. Anesthetic. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the reason why they would use it to disinfect is not because it's very necessarily um, high in alcohol. It's not. This would be really fall into the, the category of a liqueur. Okay. It's not even close to being 40% alcohol. Really? No, not even close. We don't know exactly what it is, but it's a third of the recipe is honey. So a third of it is honey. Um, it's, it is probably about 20 percent alcohol uh is mm. like a close guess i didn't know that um but the reason it's it's uh antibacterial is because it's a third honey honey itself is antibacterial honey is like a incredible substance you know like we were saying uh earlier that you can eat a thousand year old honey because it never goes bad ever in like everdom it will like turn into a dry powder in everdom one put that as a lower third yeah uh but honey is like incredible <laughs> and it's it's inherently antibacterial it's this amazing product of nature and it's delicious mm -hmm. um so in this recipe uh there is alcohol we use everclear as the the alcohol but um but it's but it's like not very much by total volume you see what i'm saying the re but when you drink it, you say like, whoa, that's a powerful taste. And it's very common for people when they taste it to think that's a strong taste. It must be strong in alcohol. It's actually not. It does have alcohol in it. But the strong taste you're tasting are spices like mace and allspice and clove and ginger and cinnamon. Is there the nutmeg? The and nutmeg. Yes. Thank you. Um, so... It's invented by the monks. Because all things good to drink are invented by monks. Right. So uh, wildflower honey. So wildflower honey, vanilla pod, cinnamon sticks, ground nutmeg, cloves, mace, allspice, peppercorns, orange, and lemon peel water, and pure grain alcohol. Those are all of the ingredients in the Niles, the Niles recipe of Krupnik. If you go to Poland and you try and you order Krupnik, it is much sweeter than this? Oh yes. Wow. It's like much more of a dessert liqueur. Mm, okay. Um, I much prefer the recipe that we have. Because it tastes like Christmas. It's very Christmassy. Yeah. And it's also more manly. Uh one time I I bought I was in New York in like Poland town, New York. Um and so I went to this liquor store and like, sure enough, they had several bottles of Krupnik. So I bought my dad. This is like kind of right as soon as we were making this a tradition. And I bought him a, a good bottle of real Krupnik from mm -hmm. Poland. It was like in Polish and everything on the bottle. So you knew it was legit. Right. Right. All right. There's no way somebody could forge that. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Because like people don't speak Polish. You right. know what I'm saying? All right. So anyway, um, I brought it home and we tried it. And we all agreed that actually we like the version we make better. The version that we, you know, it's like the real stuff is very sweet and very desserty. It was delicious, mm -hmm. but it's not something that I want to drink a lot. 
You know what I mean? This is something that's more of a, it's it's more sp spicy, like we talked about. Not because yeah. it's not like hot spicy, but all of these spices. Right. Anyway, and so this is more, it. It probably more t tastes more medicinal than the sweeter liqueur. Right. It definitely smells. I mean, if you if you smell it, it has a, definitely a, a medicinal smell. Yes. Oh yes. And if you want the recipe, all you have to do is become a patron. And are you gonna are you gonna give me the the recipe to well post? we post it we post it on Facebook on our uh, Council of Man page every year. Oh, it is it's it's on there now and it has been on there every year. My dad posts it on the Council of Man page on Facebook. So if you want the recipe, become a patron and boom, you have the recipe. I will tell you that it's not our recipe. It's a recipe we found on the internet. So it's not like we <laughs> own the recipe. It's not like a, a an old. Niles family recipe, but this is the one we use and this is the one that's so good. So there you go. Okay. If, I mean, there's probably people, look, let's be honest. You've been wanting to become a patron anyway for a while. And like, now you're just thinking, okay, fine. This is what's gonna push me over the edge. Either that or the, the course that we're doing with Carlo Broussard. One or the two. One or the two, yeah. yeah. Okay, but so the so man gear, we're the gear. The man gear today, because we are, we don't have very much time. We're talking the man gear today is a pix. Picks. Like, like pick up sticks? No. Okay. It's like something completely different. Like from a that. guitar pick? That you're maybe getting a little closer. Okay. But it's a pix. So a uh, pix is a Luke, sacred Luke, Luke, Luke got some pickup sticks in his stocking this Did year. He? Yes. Oh dude. I, how long have you been, how long has it been Adam, since you Adam, played? We're, we're talking about sticks. Jesus now, okay? Sorry. Like yeah. Have you played I that? agree, pick up sticks is cool. It's fun. Okay. <laughs> it is fun. Anyway, go ahead. A pix is a sacred vessel mm -hmm. vessel i think is i like it. that's the right word with which someone who is authorized to do so a extraordinary minister of holy communion transports the sacred eucharist mm -hmm. to the source and summit of our faith apart like away from the church location to somebody like maybe in a nursing home, like so. If you're bringing communion to someone in a hospital or in a nursing home or a, someone who's homebound, um, this is the thing that which you do it, and it's worn mm -hmm. very, most of the time. When I've seen it, I don't know if it's always, probably not neck. always, but yeah. I see it worn around the neck, mm -hmm. close to the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and so every now and then you may have seen people at church when they approach. Um, when they were going to receive communion, they also open up like a little thing and the priest places a, a host right. in there. They close it and then they themselves go to receive it, communion. It looks like a little lock box or something. Right, yeah, like a, a lock box. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the man gear today. And really we brought this up because we're going to be talking about communion and Eucharistic miracles today with a guy. Um, and Angelo. We, Angelo Labuti, yes, yes, is his name. He's a... Uh, director of photography and director of a uh, very special film that we're going to be talking also about. Also an animator of like all of like a lot of very cool your stuff. favorite Disney movies, basically. Right. But we wanted to really encourage people who are so inclined um, and or allowed to by their diocese mm -hmm. um, to maybe get involved in bringing communion to those who are unable to receive it otherwise on a, at least a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. Because that really is... A beautiful ministry, I think. To the elderly, to the imprisoned. Right. And is this something that's normally dedicated to a, a deacon? I believe it is, I, but I, I don't know that for certain. To me, I mean, to me, it's something ideally that it is done by a deacon. Okay. But, I mean, the truth is, there are more people who want, more people in nursing homes who would like to receive communion than there are deacons to bring it to them. And if that's not the case in your diocese, then you're blessed with an abundance of deacons and it is an incredible blessing. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, the reality is that the deacons cannot bring community, cannot bring communion to everyone in your diocese or even in your town who want to receive communion. And many, many people in nursing homes are forced to go for weeks without receiving communion if they receive it at all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, in March of this year, I was in the hospital with yeah, a collapsed, collapsed lung. lung. Okay, and I was incredibly was blessed to be in a Catholic hospital where there was a priest who brought me communion every day. I ended up being 
healed after nine days. I, I spent a novena in the hospital mm -hmm. and was cured on the Feast of St. David on my half birthday. Through the efficacious prayers of myself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and so over that time period, I really got to, I, I came to a deep appreciation of people who are in, who have this as a ministry of bringing communion to people who could not receive it otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was, like I said, fortunate enough to be in a Catholic hospital where there are many priests serving On in this capacity. Kind of thing. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But there are so many people across the world. Like there, there are no Catholic hospitals in their town. Okay, and they are members of your parish who maybe your priest is the only priest in the town. Okay, so this is just something that to prayerfully discern the Lord may be calling you to and it's something that you should look for guidance from your bishop and from your pastor on whether or not it's appropriate for you to serve in this capacity mm -hmm. but I believe that the Lord is calling many many people to serve him in this way to carry his body soul blood and divinity to the people who cannot be physically present at the altar on Sunday I'm pumped to continue talking about this. Yeah. We'll be right back. Yeah. I felt like I ended that well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You ready, Juan? Let's do it. Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. Adam Minahan here sitting with David Niles. We want to give a special shout out to Juan Posada, our producer, sitting there pushing the buttons for us, helping us get this episode up and running into your earbuds or speaker or however you are listening. We also want to thank Jim Spencer, who was praying. Here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we went through this segment once already. Yeah. And just spoiler alert. We've already done this once. Jim Spencer over here Full to my disclosure. left. He was sitting here praying because our You know our, we our don't equipment. have we don't have one of those things where you're like the click the uh Catholic Man clap. Show segment three, take two. Clack, yeah. And Jim over here was sitting here praying because he realized we were we were on the struggle bus. And I don't know if we were on the struggle bus or the struggle bus was on top of us. Yeah. Either way. Uh, but it was a struggle. It was a struggle, but we I think we fixed it. Thanks be to God, Jim's prayers were answered. And we get to hang out with our good Bring, friend, Angelo Labuti. Yeah. Thank you is. so much. There he is, the man, the myth, the legend there. himself. Uh, Angelo, thank you again for your patience. This is, <laughs> this is uh, I'm, I'm grateful that you are a virtuous man and that we were able to help you achieve virtue this evening with your patience. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, Angelo, you and I, uh, we have a little bit of a, a, a past only from mutual friends. Uh, Father Ripperger is a, a mutual friend of, of both of ours. And the last time Father Dave and I were hanging out with Father Ripperger, we were uh, having a whiskey and cigar. And he had mentioned that he was uh, doing some spiritual direction for some people in Hollywood. And me being, you know, the non-virtuous man that I am, I'm trying to think of, okay, who can I... Who, I want to name drop. Who can I, I name drop? Yeah, name who drop? can I name drop? Who can I name drop? Who do I know? And I was like, I follow this guy on Instagram. His name is Angelo. I know that he's done like the Lion King and like, uh, you know... I'll pretend I'll, like I know him. I'll, I'll, I'll say just because I follow him, I'll, I know him. And I threw out your name, Angelo. And Father Ripper goes, yes, that man takes his faith very seriously. And like all of a sudden it was like a very calm, like understanding of like, oh, uh, this is... Uh, he, he's very serious all of a sudden. So... Um, I'm grateful to just be in your present presence. Yeah, Angela. I mean, any ma any man who can impress Father Ripperger is an impressive man. Yes. <laughs> so, thank so you, thank you. Jesus. So we're going to talk about Jesus today. We're going to talk about Jesus. We're going to talk yeah. about Jesus and a and, movie that you're making about and a movie him. that you're making about Jesus. Uh, thank you. We're going to talk about um, Eucharistic miracles. One thing I think we need to, we we need to discuss is because I think that we don't. Let me let me back up. One thing that I'm grateful for you is that you you're a very good storyteller. You're you're a man who is who, who tells the story in it beautifully. And one thing I think that we struggle with in the Catholic Church is telling our story. We have so much beauty and depth and 
uh, just truth within the Catholic Church that we don't sometimes just throw it out there and let people t right. get a hold of it, you know, sink their teeth into. Yeah. And one of the, one of the worst or best kept secrets that is the worst problem I think one of we we have is that we don't let people know about Eucharistic miracles. That there are such things as Eucharistic miracles that happen today. That happen all the time, you know, throughout the history of the church. And so what you are doing is you are you are producing or direct I'm sorry, directing and you're the director of, uh, of photography on a movie that you are putting together on Eucharistic miracles. Is that Correct. A yeah, yeah. I mean I'm uh, I'm totally I'm totally agree 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 with you guys and I mean uh, uh, it's uh, it's really sad how we have this gem this treasure mm. and the ch the church is not really showing I mean it's kind of they're more into showing things that I mean less important and I know something like this I mean like this is a big time I mean I think and uh, even from the scientific point of view we have so many tangible proofs that uh, we will shake uh, any non-believer, I mean, and uh, I think we become shy or formal lukewarm. Uh, one thing for me, I really, I don't know if it happened to you guys, and I, I really hate when I go to church and they talk about some saints and they say, there is a legend about this saint doing this one. I said, a legend? What is it, Harry Potter? A legend? <laughs> what, what is it? Why are you talking look like look yeah. What yeah. are we talking about? Unicorns or something? Yeah. You like, mean tradition. Right. This is what you mean. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, so I mean so Eucharistic miracles, let's let's start out with definitions. Dave, we, we like to yes. define our terms. We're men, we like to define our terms and figure out what we're talking about here. So let's let us let us talk about for those who may not understand or, or, or know of or, or have ever heard. I think a lot of people know what a miracle is, but they might not be specific or familiar with the genre. Of Eucharistic, of Eucharistic miracles, miracles and why those are important among the realm of miracles. Right. So, Angela, why don't you give us a, just a, a maybe a 101 of what Eucharistic miracles are? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, for the way I see it, I mean, everybody has their own take, but I think it's a beautiful gesture of love. As we know, Christ mentioned it. I mean, he will going to be willing to leave all the sheep to save the last, last sheep. And uh, I think so this is like a figure speaking. Uh, it's uh, in this case, it was the first Eucharist miracle was done in Lanciano, a town in Italy. I've been there a few times. Uh, all my family is from there. I grew up there. And uh, what happened was this uh, monk, uh, this who was doing the mass at the moment of consecration. He had a lack of faith, and no longer believing what to, as a Catholic would believe as a this. A transubstation of uh, the Eucharist becoming a real body of Christ. Right. And uh, so, what happened on this moment? He he saw this Eucharist start to bleeding, and eventually, as we have we done some medical tests, we re revealed some amazing things about DNA. What that was really the heart of blood. Uh, of, of Christ and there's so many beautiful things but I think again it's a, it's a show of love for Christ to bring back even the last ship and uh, because we live in a, in a world of science where I think uh, led many people to go away astray from our faith because the science sometimes if you don't really know the faith really well it, it kind of makes you thinking that uh, it is a contradiction I mean, and uh, I think uh, what I'm saying meaning really well is like a really knowing the theological word, the meaning for each of those words and what Christ meant when he said those words back then. So are you, this this project you're working on, would you call it a movie yeah. or would you call it a documentary? What, what would you call it? I call it more a movie because I try to take in a, in a different kind of uh, approach than what the usual documentary is. Uh, usually in documentary, you have two people, one people talking for hours and have some images that uh, beautiful pictures that are uh, supposed to like uh, make less boring that the same shot over and over. Uh, and I think, I mean, uh, what, what I, what, what, one, one thing I really love when I study this, the 
life of uh, Walt Disney. And because I mean, I worked for Disney for so many years, I mean, Disney, Marvel, you know, this kind of company, we had to understand uh, in his philosophy and how he was thinking about filmmaking. One thing he was used to doing was he was flying to New York uh, to be on top of the Statue of Liberty, asking to himself why people, why Americans love the statue so much, why they feel this bound with it. And that he wanna try to make in a movie style that the people can see his movie and be such bounded with what the, the story was. And he realized it was because, I mean, the, the history, I mean, uh, that was uh, such a huge salvation was is really brought it up them uh, to be reborn as they, as, as they, because they were coming from a new country and go through so much of uh, hard times. And that was uh, finally this uh, flowered blooming on such a bad uh, a hardship. So same things, I mean, when I learned about when I working at Disney, Marvel, or this kind of company, or the kind of films, that, I mean, uh, the audience is so used today as a, with the video games uh, and the live action, super action. And if today we are bringing uh, a documentary where there is, the, the tone is always the same, even if the tone is always fast, it's so slow, it still becomes slow because it's so monotone, it repeats itself and, and the people get so used to the pace, they become right. boring. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so what I try to bring in is the lots of more action, lots of different type of pace on the filmmaking uh, that uh, will, it, 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 is, it is how we approaching a movie. I mean, we have act one, act two, act three, and it's going to be a journey. It's almost the Indiana Johnson in a movie where our hero is going to a journey to find the final answer to helping a non-believer. Yeah, mm. see, that's, I mean, that's a beautiful thing. Again, it goes back to we have the best story. It's not because it's like our story. It's like it's Jesus' story. Right. Yeah. You know, and all we have to do is be able to portray it, is yeah. be able to tell it to other people. This is like, and this is the beautiful thing about Eucharistic miracles, right, is it's not just about... Uh, reaffirming the faith of the believers. It's not just about the Christians who already hold to the belief that the Eucharistic the Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, but also for those who are the unbelievers who realize, like what you were saying, Angelo, who are maybe more uh, the scientists, uh, uh, almost to the religion of science. Right. You know, the people who are uh, just believe like in, in the scientific method alone which is interesting because let's talk about philosophy if you want to do that but right so the scientific know, method was invented by a catholic monk right exactly okay. I mean, but just so, so you know they, they want to know that you know they want to know all of this and it's like well this is if you if you look at this science this is this is the only lead you to the truth so it's in christ's mercy and love that he continues to draw all of his creation towards right. him you know, to love him and to serve him so that we can be with him in, in the next life. I want to pick this up, this thread of faith and science on the other side of the break. Okay, sounds okay. good. We'll, we'll be right back. Sounds good. Okay, Angelo, that one, that went... It's so good. Way better. So good. Muy perfecto. Right. Perfecto, guys. Muy is not Italian. How no, do you say I was it? speaking Spanish. Yeah. I'm speaking Spanish. I only know how to say I want to eat a pizza. And <laughs> oh man, okay. I oh, more perfect. I found that Italian women find me very funny. One time I was on a, but, a tour but, bus. But looks aren't everything, Dave. I was on a tour bus and I was there with my wife. I wasn't. It was you know like you know it's all up and up. But uh, I was leaving the uh, tour bus and our tour guide said something to me and I said. Arrivederci. And she thought that was the funniest thing she'd ever heard. <laughs> well, she needs to get it out was, more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what's really funny? We're, nice. So, nice. Nice. <laughs> so my brother-in-law, he's a priest. He studied at the NAC. Um, and so he was ordained to as a transitionary deacon in St. Peter's. And so we went over there for his uh, ordination. And 
It was what I thought was so funny was our tour guide. You know, she's Italian. She lives in Italy. She gives t- she gives tours professionally of like the Catholic Church stuff. Okay, one time Pope Francis came by. It's like driving, and she lost it. She was like, ah, she, like she was just going nuts over seeing Pope Francis, and like she, she was like running across the parking lot, like. Forget all you guys. I know I'm like supposed to be tour guiding you. It was just, it was, I thought very endearing to see someone who lives in Rome, who probably sees Pope Francis a lot, you know, I would guess, still freak out about seeing the Pope, you know, like, I thought that was cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. It would be so cool to be the Pope. You'd be so famous. I don't really want to be famous. I'm trying to be famous. I mean, like... That's what, it's yeah. the purpose of all this, yeah. I know you're doing this for Jesus, this whole show <laughs> thing. I'm doing it to be famous. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him his opportunity to punch me earlier. He didn't do it. Juan, you got the... You're, that's not quite right. It's, it's too big. Okay, give him one minute. Okay, that's no problem. It's just too big. That's so funny, though. What do you want to cover in this? Oh yes. So uh, what we'll cover, what what we will cover in this uh, segment, we'll we'll uh, give the website uh, or one. If you'll throw that back up there, when like when we discuss it, that'd be great. Mucho. Uh, that'd be mucho. Um, so that way we can push people to help crowdfund that because we're you guys are really close. It'd be good right. to. Uh, yeah, we'll mention it. Yeah, but we'll we'll talk about uh, you know the Eucharistic the the beauty of yeah yeah, yeah that's fine. If you can get the actual website, okay, we can is do it that. Chris, oh, christianchannel.com? That's what it is, right? Slash, uh, yes. slash, slash, slash crowdfund-films. So just get to christianchannel.com and, and they can probably find it from there. If they get to, right? It's, I mean, it's a little bit hidden. Angelo, okay. oh, you muted Angelo again. Oh yeah, you you muted muted Angelo. Okay, so uh, so so we'll discuss. We'll, Say that again, Angelo. We couldn't hear you. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you go to channel, if you click the crowdfunding, and I mean, uh, you, it gets to that page. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just we'll we'll get them to christianchannel.com, and then the one of the tabs at the top is crowdfund. Yeah. Okay. And, and we'll get yeah. we'll, we'll make sure we talk about that, but we'll talk about um yeah. uh. I think we need to we come back to the faith and science. Yeah, I think the faith and science element is one of the most significant in the film. Based on the yeah. I watched I watched the Kickstarter video and that seemed to be one of the main is that I mean correct me in if this, that's Yeah. Yeah, I mean Ray, the beautiful thing is Ray is uh, is an engineer so he kind of uh, uh understand the uh, the scientific aspect I mean and the terminology mm -hmm. and we uh, we want to one thing I want to do with, with I mean, I've, been, I've done lots of animation, special effect. Uh, so one thing I want to do with is uh, put the visual effect, uh, 3D animation, where the hard talking of the doctors or the scientific point of view, it's not easy for a normal person to understand. I mean, so we are going to overlapping these, uh, uh, these the visuals. Story. Yeah, yeah, you'll be able absolutely. to tell the story. I mean, because so. I mean, if if guys don't understand what the scientists are actually saying, right. it's tough to convey the story to normal people when they're using yeah. scientific language. Because yeah, you don't have to be a scientist to understand to you watch the to un understand the video. Right. So the movie. Right. Okay. So yeah. that's what we'll that's what we'll talk about, and then we'll just have fun, and that'll be it'll be be eaten up really quick. Can you put the cue base up, Juan? Just yeah. so that way I can see How where much we time are. We have left. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, bueno. Oh, you didn't do it. That's okay. That's okay. He, we won't need it anyway. Yeah, we getting his audio, so I just didn't do it. Yeah, but it's good for us so we can see where we are. I was starting the third bit. It's like an, an advanced timer. Well, just do the fourth. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. Yeah. Thank you, Juan. Really complicated timer. <laughs> that, that is probably the most complicated timer we could have. <laughs> hey, we like them. Yeah. Hey. The virtuous life is not easy, so why make everything else easy? Don't act like that's virtuous. <laughs> that's superfluous. Superfluous. Fair he enough. already told you he doesn't care about being virtuous. Yeah, he just wants to be famous. He just yeah. be famous. <laughs> Man, why are you wasting time?
<laughs> All right, let's let's roll you on. Him? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Catholic Man Show. I'm David Niles here with Adam Minahan. Joined via VMix call by Angelo Labuti, director and director of photography. I'm going to say director of photography and director of the film, the movie we're talking about today. What's the? Is there a title? What's the official title? So now we just call it. We are, we are, we are going to developing it okay. after. I mean, when the, the, the more the more things we are going to get. Sure. I mean, uh, we know what we're going to do, and then we're going to change the title. But for now, just you guys me. So uh, you guys are doing, you're crowdfunding it still. You're very close to your goal. So everybody needs to go to christianfilm.com slash crowdfunding, crowdfund dash films. But just go to christianchannel.com and you can you click tab. on the, the crowdfunding tab and so you can help help get them over the edge because they're, they're very, very close and i i believe i saw it i saw i think i saw if you donate a hundred dollars you actually make it in the credits which would be pretty awesome yeah but you're uh, yeah you're at uh 158 940 out of 175,000 uh that you're trying to raise so you're very close angel i mean that this is you are you are very very close to uh and i love that you're getting the support that you are because uh, this yeah. is a, a, a big amount, yet uh, not very much actually when it comes to the know, project crea creating a yeah. film. Because like what you were tell telling us earlier, or actually I think what I saw in even the crowdfunding film is like eight seconds costs a ton of money. Like $33,000 or, or something like that to be able to do this. Expensive. So you're you're taking some of your buddies that you know uh, and, and putting together to, to be able to tell the story as you know scientists are talking about the things that are happening in these Eucharistic miracles. You're, you, you need to be able to convey the story outside of like what you were saying, Angelo, of like just some a talking head right. you know, discussing things that may be over other people's heads. So you need to be able to showcase and portray the story that's actually happening in a in a beautiful way. So that's why we're, we're trying to raise but the money. But Angelo, here's the question I want to ask you. It's, it's, it's about this combination of faith and science that really the Catholic faith has embraced with both hands since the beginning. Um, in this movie, you're not asking people to just believe in these miracles because, tr oh, trust us. Talk. Would you yeah. talk about the combination and the the partnership that faith and science play in this film? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, um, everything. The reason why I accepted to do this movie and I proposed it uh, was because I knew that the Ray, he, he have like a, a really beautiful. Uh, it's called the Joy of Life on YouTube channel. That's where I found out about him. He's, he, he's an engineer. So he talk that language. He understand that technical language uh, and uh, he can present uh, from that scientific point of view. Because this, I mean, the crowdfunding was more for Catholic, but this movie is more for the lukewarm Catholic, mm. for Protestant uh, and for atheists. Because I think each of us, we have those friends or family that, I mean, they are more on the scientific uh, uh, kind of like a re religion, like, like, like you, you were saying before. Uh, so this is like a just for them. And I mean, so we have to in, in feeling and talking their language and showing that, I mean, it's not just uh, some Catholic believing. I mean, uh, because we are taking what the prices say, which that's... If, which which would be good enough. Well, yeah, I mean, Jesus said yeah. it, so it would be good enough, but he knew that there would be some people mm -hmm. in the world that would need, because he made some people scientifically minded. He made them that way, and he didn't just abandon them. He doesn't abandon them to this day. And even, uh, even in modern times, there are still Eucharistic miracles going on. Uh, and so those, those things are signs that are meant for the non-believers that we should be championing we should mm -hmm. be shouting these things from the rooftop yep. and what i love about this movie is that it's not a one-time event when you make the movie it's made it's going to be here forever right i mean so there will it will be how many people will be evangelized by this mm -hmm. I mean, it's you, there's no way of knowing and i know that even people like me who takes their faith very seriously i'm sure I will learn. I will learn a lot from watching this movie. 
Yeah, and, 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 and I think it's a, it's a good way even to know how to present I mean, We are going to interview some theologians as well, or here, when you listen to the doctor, using the terminology helps so much as well. Because, I mean, it's like sometimes if you don't use the right terminology, it makes it look like it just come up in your mind. And I mean, right. or it's not really from a specific point of view. There is a specific terminology. Same things in, in, in theology, there is a specific t terminology. And when you listen to Father Rippinger, for example, using those vocabulary that I mean, Sam Thomas Aquinas was using, empower and that make you believe it. I mean, that people know something more than you. I mean, because, I mean it, it is a technical aspect. Yeah, and I mean, as, mm -hmm. as, as practicing Catholics who, who take their faith seriously, we know that there's a miracle that happens every single day. In, in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, we know that the body, blood, and soul, and divinity of our Christ, uh, of our Lord, is in this, uh, you know, is transubstantiated into, for, or from bread and wine. Right. You know, so we know that there's a miracle that happens every single day. Right, yeah, exactly. Every Mass is a Eucharistic miracle. miracle. Right, but like, Angela, like you were saying uh, in the last break, when you were talking about the priest who didn't necessarily believe, and he, when he held up the body uh, of Christ in, in consecration, it became right. real flesh. That blood uh, and flesh was actually scientifically studied in 1971 by scientists, and was it was revealed that it was actually still flesh. It was a, a, a cardiac uh, heart flesh. Yeah, well, I think it the, was the left ventricle. Yeah, and the blood was still there. Like, maybe it, it was the right ventricle. It was still like f uh, like fresh blood. It wasn't like you know this was 1,200 years ago. It wasn't like dried up blood. It was like acted like it was like it fresh. just happened. So like. Again, Angela, this is why we need people like you to tell these stories because uh, I, th I think we're not doing a good job of doing right. it. Yeah, and especially who can do yeah, it in a in a beautiful way. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. That's you totally you totally nailed down. I mean, the problem is is that one because I mean, it's like there are the fact that the blood type is consistent with all those Eucharistic miracles. Right. Just that per se. It's uh, one in a billion. I mean, already the blood type A B positive is something so unique, particular for the Jew people from that period of time, from the area. So oh, oh, so just A B that, A B positive was a unique blood type in during that time. Is that what you said? No, no. So I think if I remember correctly, the A B positive is the blood that was being discovered in all these miracles. Right. But in, in our in our in, in America in Europe is not a typical blood type. But in that specific region uh, where Christ was uh, was pretty from kind the, of custom from the Jewish community. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I yeah, misunderstood. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that that's that per, per se it's uh, something supposed to converting everybody. I mean, because right. I mean, like, how can be possible? It's been it's been discovered this same blood type uh, in uh, so many different. But there are so many other ones. And I mean, as you mentioned, the, the, the heart, uh, they found uh, a lack of, I mean, uh, with a white cell, a red cell, they was able to prove that a person the, the, where the heart belonged and the blood belonged was somebody was an extremely excruciating sufferings, mm -hmm. almost was being beat to death. Come on, man. I was like, I, yeah. How really you want to... Like, again, right. what, what we're going to do it is showing visually as well. I mean, all these kind of things with special effect, uh, with live action and stuff. Because uh, I, I really love the movie uh, The Case of Christ. Even it was like a little bit for the protest. But visually, kind of went through this journey and proved the existence of Christ. Uh, and I think that, that this is going to be a journey for proving that... Uh, the existence of the Christ in the Eucharist. Angel, yes. Angel, what was something that you learned while, you know, preparing for this, learning about yeah. it? Uh, you know, uh, you guys have already probably started shooting. I'm assuming you've, you've shot some uh, based off of your the, the reel that you have. What's something that you have learned from this that you didn't realize that you were going to take away? Yeah, so first of all, that there are some medical proof, some I mean, from from these doctors, I mean, that the Ray already interviewed. Uh, there are some evidence, some really physical problems, I mean, medical, medical, and uh, so that's like to be able to go there, Lanciano, Buenos Aires, 
and Tixla and be able to visit, to see this, this and then try to to see for what we can do to visualize it as well on that one there. But I, I, I knew because I studied a little bit about Carlo Acutis, which uh, we started to do this movie because uh, we want to finish what he started. Uh, but I never, I never heard about all these uh, important uh, medical and scientific things all together. I just heard one time one and two, three years after another one, but your brain, it doesn't, I don't know for me, probably it can be just me, but when you listen something that is not on your, uh, let's say, I mean, like if, when I listen something about a movie, I can retain lots of information. But when I speak about something that is no, is the medicine or something else is no my everyday bread. Uh, right. Uh, no retaining as much. So when I heard about all these Eucharistic miracles, I retain a really, really little and never all those information together. So I think what we are going to do in this movie, we are going to place all those information together and, and visually as well. So it's, it's supposed to be something hopefully that can, more people can retain and, and really go home and, and really question it after. Yeah, Juan, can you put up the website again? Just because I want to, I just want to once again, everybody like they're very, very close. What was the target? What's the target? 175,000. 175. They're at 150, 159,000 right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, go check guys, it out. This this needs to happen. I mean, like mm -hmm. the and they've already got a lot of money behind this project. So go and support. Just give them whatever you can. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of you who listen to this podcast. So if you just everybody gives a little bit, we'll get there. Yeah. And remember, Jesus is just calling us. Uh, he's calling us towards right. him. Right. Uh, go spend time with him in the Eucharist. Uh, in adoration, and, right? And yeah, in, exactly. Spend an hour in adoration, an hour in adoration for the movie. That'd be great. That'd be great. Angelo, thank you so much for hanging out with us this evening. It's been a, it's been a true joy. Uh, my pleasure. And uh, if I can say some, something, something more is uh, when we put this budget, uh, is really low because we didn't take uh, any fee for it. Mm. So. Uh, we really try to, because I mean, uh, if I just put my salary, it's going to be over the budget that just someone there. Yeah. So all of us, uh, we are trying to really get, gain all these free times because I mean, for minimizing the cost, because I know tendency to usually Catholic and I know like a Protestant donate a lot of money. But we had a lot of, like, hopefully we can have a little bit more of what we ask. Because I mean, we had, uh, as you guys know, the guy down there didn't like what we were doing. Uh, and we had some extra expenses we didn't, we didn't expect in. I mean, recently we were supposed to go to fly to interviewing uh, uh, Tim Staple, because I mean, uh, probably you guys know, yeah. um, is, uh, is a good friend with, with your, uh, your uh, um, Como, the guy, the guy that do your, your show. Yeah, Carlo, yeah. Carlo, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Carlo, yeah, yeah. So, um, but we had so many problems. The two cinematographers, the two cameramen who were supposed to be coming, one from, from Chicago, one from New York. The day before, one got sick for COVID and the other one was three feet uh. of snow. So they lost their flight. Uh, they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't uh, uh, bring their own cap camera equipment. So we had to spend like $6,000 just to renting stuff. So uh. we already locked him and hiring some other people last minute uh, that, uh, so it's, uh, we, we Never expecting it's going to be so difficult, so many problems. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we use uh, the money a little bit more. Because I mean, again, I'm not going to take nothing about it. I mean, and we try to be as transparent. We are going to showing all the expenses as well. So this way, people are going to know that I mean, this is just for Christ. Yeah. Mm, praise God, Angelo. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for what you're doing. Yes, and if we can help in any way, Angelo, uh, let us know. We're you know we're happy to just be a part of the team a little bit if we can um and we're thankful for i'm we're i'm very glad that you're in the breach with us and not against us <laughs> the beard no, looks right? good the beard looks good too by the way 